1956, a new movie splashed across the silver screen. It was a biblical epic called The Ten Commandments, directed by Cecil B. DeMille. The movie follows the dramatic story of the Exodus, starring Charlton Heston as Moses and Yul Brynner as Ramses II, Pharaoh of Egypt. It was a box office sensation, and it is still considered one of the highest grossing films of all time. The movie received seven Academy Award nominations, and it won the Oscar for Best Visual Effects, which were groundbreaking for the time. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, the scene of the burning bush, the plague of fiery hail, the angel of death, the pillar of fire, the giving of the Ten Commandments, the parting of the Red Sea. And this actually required quite a big budget. In fact, the movie cost about $13 million to make, which doesn't sound like so much today, but back in 1956, this was a huge sum of money. Now, the movie may seem a little bit cheesy now to our standards, but as a kid, I was absolutely mesmerized by this movie. And when I was growing up, this movie always seemed to play on TV leading up to Easter. And I remember thinking as I would watch this movie on television, wow, if God can do that, what else can he do? If God can rescue baby Moses from almost certain death, if he could strike the Egyptians with these ten plagues, if he could part the Red Sea, then what can he do for me? If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to look at Exodus chapter 13. We'll have the text up on the screen as well. You know, deep down... We are all wondering, is there a God like that? Deep down, we are all wondering, is there a God like that? Is there a God who is mighty and powerful to save? Is there a God who can rescue us from our brokenness? Is there a God who can release the oppressed? Is there a God who can do something about the injustice and the evil in this world? Is there a God who can mend what has been fractured? Is there a God who can change and transform lives? And I used to think, as a kid, that the Exodus story, this movie, The Ten Commandments, I used to think it was an odd choice for Easter time. I mean, wouldn't it be better, more fitting to show something that had to do more with Easter during Easter time? Wouldn't it make more sense to show a movie about Jesus, about the cross, about the empty tomb? But I don't think that anymore. Let me show you why. Exodus chapter 13, starting in verse 17. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not leave them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear an oath. He said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. After leaving, leaving Succoth, they camped at Etham at the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Pi-Hiroth between Migdal and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite Baal-Zephon. 
Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around in the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots, along with all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Pi Hiroth, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. 430 years. 430 years, and that's how long the Hebrew people had been enslaved in Egypt. 430 years of injustice. 430 years of oppression. 430 years of suffering. 430 years of beatings and mistreatment. 430 years of violence, 430 years of cruelty. These people had lived their whole lives as slaves. Every man, every woman, every child, they were born into slavery. They lived as slaves, and slavery was all they ever knew. They had never encountered freedom in their lives. And so what a strange feeling it must have been for them. Instead of waking up that morning ready to work, they woke up in a tent. Instead of back-breaking labor to build cities for Pharaoh, they were now at the edge of freedom. And so can you feel the rush of excitement that morning? Can you feel the fear? Sense the anxiety, the worry, the anticipation. What if Pharaoh changes his mind? What if we die in this wilderness? What if those troops bear down on us? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? You know the what if game, don't you? You've played it. You've experienced it. What if this bad thing happens? What if that bad thing happens? What if I suffered this embarrassment? What if I encountered that grief? What if this doesn't go right with my family? What if this relationship goes badly? What if things at work get more difficult? What if, what if, what if, what if? And for the Israelites, this is a matter of life and death. The Hebrew people knew all about slavery but they also knew all about the Lord. They had witnessed his awesome power and his mighty strength through the 10 plagues. They had experienced firsthand the mighty outstretched arm of the Lord against Pharaoh. But you know, they also knew Pharaoh. They knew his cruelty. They knew his hatred. They knew his power, his might. They knew his stubborn heart. He's not actually going to permit this. In fact, he's on his way right now. 
we are going to die. We will never be free. Look at these words in verse 13 of our text. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will never see you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. Can you see... That highway through the sea? Can you see that wall of water on both sides of them, to the right and to the left? Can you hear that thundering of footsteps behind you? The rumbling of chariots and horses? Can you smell the body odor of your fellow slaves? Can you smell the animal dander of those animals that you're bringing with you? Can you feel the dry ground beneath your toes? Can you taste freedom? Can you taste deliverance? Consider the glory of the Lord. There is nothing to fear, not even Pharaoh, not even Pharaoh's army. Watch their response in this text, verse 29. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. You know, the book of Exodus tells this dramatic, dramatic story of rescue. This dramatic story of redemption. I could still remember this image on that movie when I was a boy. 
This narrative follows four main elements, four main stages in the play, four plot points, if you will. Number one, the people cry out to God. They're in distress, they're troubled, they want and need to be rescued. And then the Lord rescues his people. Evil is defeated. And what? The people put their trust in the Lord. In fact, we see this pattern all throughout Scripture whenever God delivers his people. We see this story repeat itself again and again and again. We see this in the book of Judges where the people cry out and the Lord rescues them and evil is defeated and the people put their trust in the Lord. And then they fall away and then the cycle continues. We see this in the life of Jonah. For the people of Nineveh and for Jonah himself as the prophet, we see this for Daniel living in exile in Babylon. We see this among his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We see this story again and again and again in the life of God's people. They cry out to God, the Lord rescues them, he defeats evil, and the people put their trust in him. From slavery to redemption, from exile to homecoming, from destruction to restoration, from defeat to victory, from oppression to freedom, from sin to salvation, from death to resurrection. See, the story of the Exodus is our story too. See, at one time, just like Israel, just like the people of God, we were once enslaved. We were once enslaved. We were enslaved to sin. We were once held captive by our own idolatry, by our own brokenness, by our own selfishness, our own pride, our own sin-soaked hearts. We were once powerless. We were once desperate. We were once hemmed in, awaiting destruction. But thankfully, Jesus is our Redeemer. Jesus is our Passover Lamb. He is our pure, spotless, perfect Passover Lamb. His blood protects us from the plague of sin and death. He sets us free from our slavery to sin. He liberates us from our brokenness. He sets us apart as his new covenant people. His resurrection paves the way for our redemption. His resurrection paves the way through for our redemption. See, the Exodus story, it is our story, church. Just as the Hebrew people marched to victory through the sea, we also march to victory through the waters of baptism. We also march to victory by the precious blood of Jesus. We also march to victory through his death, his burial, his resurrection. You see, the resurrection of Jesus ushers in a new kind of of Exodus. The resurrection of Jesus ushers in a new kind of Exodus. You see, if the Lord can part the Red Sea, then what can he do for me? What can he do for you? If he can roll the stone away from the tomb, then what does that mean for me? What does that mean for you? If he can walk away from the grave, what else can he do? Is there anything stopping him? Several years ago, I, uh, I put together a playlist of several of my favorite songs. Um, I love Easter songs. I love resurrection songs. And it was Easter season, and I wanted to listen to some good worship music that related to the resurrection. So I made this whole playlist of like 12 songs. And one of the songs I put in there, and uh, this has become one of my favorite playlists. I love to listen to this. 
Uh, one of my favorite songs in that list is a song by Andrew Peterson called His Heart Beats. Listen to these lyrics. His heart beats. His blood begins to flow. Waking up what was dead a moment ago. And his heart beats, now everything is changed. Because the blood that brought us peace with God is racing through his veins. His heart beats, his heart beats. He breathes in, his living lungs expand. The heavy air surrounding death turns to breath again. He breathes out, he is the word and flesh once more. The lamb of God slain for us, he is the lion ready to roar. And his heart beats. So crown him the Lord of life. Crown him the Lord of love. Crown him the Lord of all. He took one breath and put death to death. Where is your sting, O grave? How grave is your defeat? I know, I know his heart beats. He rises glorified in flesh, clothed in immortality, the firstborn from the dead. He rises and his work's already done. So he's resting as he rises to reclaim the bride he won. And his heart beats. So crown him the Lord of life, crown him the Lord of love, crown him the Lord of all. He took one breath and put death to death. Where is your sting, O grave? How grave is your defeat? I know, I know his heart beats. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. He must reign until no enemy is left. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. He took one breath. He put death to death. Where is your sting, O grave? How grave is your defeat? How grave is his victory? I know, I know, I know his heart beats. You see, my friends, as followers of Jesus, our hearts beat with his. We are raised into newness of life with our Savior. The resurrection of Jesus ushers in a new kind of exodus. That there is freedom in the name of Jesus. There is hope in the name of Jesus. There is peace in the name of Jesus. There is new life in the name of Jesus. The same God who raised Christ from the dead is the same God who is still changing lives. You see, as Christians, we don't just walk in this freedom, this path of freedom, once. We walk this road daily. We live in resurrection power every single day as we walk in step with the Spirit as we remain faithful, as we are obedient, as we live our lives faithful to Jesus Christ, as we crucify the flesh and walk humbly in the Spirit, as we surrender to the Lordship of Jesus every single day, we live a resurrected life. The same God who delivered his people out of slavery in Egypt is the same God who releases us from slavery to sin. The same God who protected his covenant people is the same God who still preserves our life through his son. The same God who rescued his people from death is the same God who took death upon himself. The same God who struck down the wickedness of Pharaoh is the same God who still judges the living and the dead. The same God who parted the Red Sea is the same God who rolled away the stone to victory. The same God who delivered his people through the water of the sea is the same God who delivers us through the waters of baptism. Because the resurrection of Jesus ushers in a new kind of exodus. You know, every morning when I come to the church building, 
Sometimes I walk, sometimes I drive, but every morning when I come in here, I drive past or I walk past the Elm Lawn Memorial Cemetery. You drove past it when you came in this morning as well. And I saw it this week. It was Monday or Tuesday. I saw that blue tent. Most of us don't like to think about it. We don't like to think about death. We don't even like to talk about it. In fact, if someone has died, a lot of times we use other language for it. They have passed. We don't like to be confronted with it. We don't like to think about death, but that blue tent is a steady reminder of our mortality, isn't it? But if God can roll away that tomb, that stone from the tomb, then he can save you too. The resurrection of Jesus ushers in a new kind of exodus. So cry out to him. Cry out to him in your brokenness. Cry out to him in your sin. Cry out to him for salvation. Seek his resurrection. Seek his resurrection for your redemption. Seek his love for your liberation. Seek his face for true freedom. Seek his power for your peace. We must walk in his path of deliverance every single day. Because the resurrection of Jesus ushers in a new kind. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our selfishness, our pride, our covetous desires, our greed, our lust, of all the ways that we have sought to be on the throne of our own lives, In the midst of our brokenness, you demonstrated your love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. To atone for our sins. But Lord, I also thank you that that's not the end of the story. That Jesus walked away from that tomb. That his heart beats. And his lungs began to fill with oxygen. And because of his resurrection, we too may walk the path of deliverance, of new life, every single day. Lord, thank you for this new exodus that you have given us. Help us to remain faithful and true and obedient and grateful to you to live our lives for you, live every single day within the reality of the resurrection. And it's in Christ's name that I pray.